So in my other ML.NET videos, I used datasets that had a label in them so that the algorithms can use that to make a predictive model. However, there are some datasets that don't have those labels on them, but we can still use them for some machine learning models. One popular type is called clustering, which is where the algorithm will attempt to cluster or categorize the data into sections that have similar patterns. And we can create a clustering model in ML.NET. The data I'll be using in this video is the wheat seed data, which you can find at Kaggle. This data has different attributes of different wheat seeds, such as area, perimeter, length, and width of each seed. And this data will determine if each seed is in a certain variety of wheat, such as Kama, Rosa, or Canadian. All right, so I'm back in Visual Studio with the usual .NET Core console project loaded up. And I already have ML.NET downloaded and my data is in the solution here. One thing I tend to forget sometimes when I have data in the solution like this is to remember to mark the file to be copied to the output. Otherwise, the program won't be able to find it. Now, if you've seen my other videos that use, videos that use ML.NET's new API, then you'll know what happens next. I'll start by defining the training data location and then create the ML context instance. Next to read in the data, I'll use the same context.data, that text reader class that we've done a few times before, and then tell it how to read in the file. And the separator is going to be a comma, and it's going to have a header. For the columns, I'll use the same column names such as A for the area of the seed, P for parameter, and so on. And all these columns are floats, so I use the data kind r4 and then put what location they are within the file. Then next I'll use the text loader to read from the data location, and then I'll use the context that clustering that train test split method to split my data set into training and then testing data. And then I'll use a test fraction of 20%. So now let's create the pipeline. And all I really need to do to the data here is to concatenate all of the features into one column called features. And then I'll append it to a k-means trainer. And then I'll tell it the features column is named features and I can give it a cluster count. Now, since this data set already has the labels, we can go through it and notice that there are only three unique labels. So we can specify the cluster count to be three here. And bear in mind, you would not always have this in your data set, so you would have to experiment with other cluster counts to get a, the optimal cluster. And now that we have the pipeline, I can call a fit method on it and pass in the training data. And to perform the same transformations on the testing data, I can call model.transform and pass in the test data to transform it. So now that we have our model created, let's now evaluate on it. And to do that, I can call a context that clustering dot evaluate method and give it the transformed testing data. Then specify the score column is named score and the features column is named features. And the metric I'll be looking at is the average minimum score. And you can think of this score for clustering as the average distance from all examples to the center point of their cluster. And so the, the lower the number here, then the better the clustering is. And keep in mind, if you ever get an average minimum score of zero, then that will indicate each example will be in its own cluster. All right, and now let's have it make an actual prediction. And to do this, like, like in the other examples, I need to create the prediction engine, which I do on the model. And this method is generic, and I'll put the seed data class as the input and the seed prediction class as the output. And I do need to create these classes, so I'll create the seed data class. And I'll just paste this in so you don't have to see me type all this. So with the prediction engine created, I can now call the predict method on it and give it a seed data class instance as the input. And I have some random values for the fields on this class, so I'll paste that in. 
and to see what cluster this is predicted predicted to be in I can look at the selected cluster ID so I'll run this and see what we get all right and we get the average minimum score as well as the predicted cluster our new data would belong in and there we go we now have a clustering model built in ml.net hope you enjoyed the video thanks for watching and I'll see you next time